Become revisited. TM. There we go. No one can take it anymore. It's going to change every time. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. TM. They can't, yeah. they can't take us. They t- can't get it. I can't speak. <laughs> they can't yeah. take this away from us. We're going to be revisiting the classic. Would you say? Yes. I'd probably say it's a classic. Oh yeah. No, 100% classic. I really say that because I just saw it for the first time last night. Yeah. And that is Halloween town from 1998. And um, I know once I told people I was watching it for the first time, I know a lot of people got very excited. Um, and I see why, because this was a big, uh, a big Halloween movie. Like I, I didn't realize, I don't know why I didn't realize how big of a Halloween movie it was going to be, but that's because I, I, I had that connection with the characters in the movie, <laughs> them not being able to celebrate Halloween. I was like, maybe there's something to this. I should ask my parents. <laughs> yeah i mean it is called halloween town so right 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 i don't know what i was expecting but it went right in and i was like i love this i love the brother <laughs> do you want to tell the people what halloween town is about if they didn't get to rewatch it and revisit it with us i got you so halloween town is the story of marnie piper played by kimberly j brown and she is this uh, 13 year old who just really loves Halloween, but her mother, Gwen, played by Judith Hogue, just doesn't want her for some reason, does not want her or her sister, Sophie, your little sister, to ever go trick or treating. Their brother, on the other hand, Dylan, played by uh, Joey Zimmerman, could give less of a fuck. He's, he wants to read books and watch nature documentaries. He's a boring ass kid. I love who, that character, though. I'm like, I would hang out with this kid. He's boring. <laughs> anyway so then um so so the first the first thing is like gwen is being very very stern they're the only house in the block that is not dressed up for halloween barely even eat candy like they like she doesn't want anything to do with halloween so that Mm -hmm. right there makes marty just be like well why why is this such a big deal even her friends are at the house like wearing like costumes be like come on they like it's we're 13 trick-or-treating mom's like Mm -hmm. no like they're just some things about halloween you should not know about so it makes you think like if i would at least if i was marnie would be like well what happened to you like like this is all like a you thing this is not a me thing she kind of <laughs> does that she's like hey, that, that i mean up. honestly that was what my childhood was like they're like we don't celebrate holiday and i'm like why and they're like we just don't like, it's because elijah's a, a goddamn warlock and this is something i've always said <laughs> apparently but he waited until i had to find out myself to tell me <laughs> it's like a whole so movie. anyways <laughs> Anyway, so so after they after Marnie and Gwen get into this huge argument, um, we start to discover that there might be something else because uh, Gwen makes cookies and Sophie really wants a cookie, and for some reason, um, well, a good reason, Gwen's like, "Hey, you're not gonna have a cookie because we have dinner first, and then you can have a cookie afterwards." Even though she made okay. cookies, even little she, details, even though she made the cookies before she made dinner, but whatever, that's fine. That's that's fine, mm-hmm. Dandy. But Sophie, uh, uh, the, the cookie, the cookie starts uh, coming towards her and stuff. So that's when we start to realize, oh, there's some magic here. So after that, we get the the the, the beautiful presence of Debbie Reynolds, who plays mm-hmm. Aggie, uh, Gwen's mother, and Marnie, uh, uh, Sophie, and Dylan's grandmother, comes into town, and she has a bag that walks around with her that 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 looks like a dog very strange bus flying around all over the place no one notices it it's fine it's fine little details gave me really uh big uh magic school bus vibes though I was like, oh, wow. oh yeah 100 100 it was like miss frizzle um, oh no yeah. okay yeah <laughs> nope just aggie so anyways long story short so aggie is there for a specific reason but the like one like she's there for a main specific reason like she really really needs Gwen's help but there's also this other layer of just Aggie being a total just mischievous witch and she's like you know what I'm just gonna start some- my daughter I haven't seen her in a long time so she brings like all these costumes she brings all this candy she brings everything that Gwen does not want the kids to get excited about and so blah blah, blah you start to discover that there is this evil dark force that's in a, a Gwen's hometown which is say it with me kids Halloween Town yeah anyways so there's like this weird mysterious dark force that that's like 
kind of zapping people and putting them in a movie theater and they're just frozen and gray. <laughs> it was a cool That's movie it. theater, I must say. It was a cool movie theater. I like the way it looked. I like the way yeah. I introduced the bad guy too through that. Anyway, cool. Yeah, don't <laughs> spoil. Don't spoil. Even oh, though this movie's whoops. been out for a long time. So anyway, so then um, uh, Gwen's like, no, not helping you. So um, Marnie is like over overhearing this conversation and Marnie's like, I knew it. I'm, I'm a damn witch. I fucking knew it. And and <laughs> that's exactly so it's the exact line. Yeah. I knew it. I'm a yep. fucking witch. But yeah. so Dylan, she's like talking to her little brother Dylan, the little smart ass Dylan that Elijah likes for some reason. Oh, he's and, so uh, great. <laughs> he needs to get smacked. Okay. Uh, I've decided that this was a dream. So why am I going to worry about it? <laughs> That's why he just like goes along with everything a while after a while. He's like I've accepted is... this is a dream. He just is in denial of the whole movie. Doesn't she pinch him like right after that? He's like, "Ow, why'd you do that?" Yeah, I might have. Yeah. Uh, so so they're like talking Dylan and and Marnie and uh, and Marnie's like, "Well, I'm going. I'm going to go follow Grandma." And uh, Dylan is like, he follows her because he's the man of the house because their dad is gone. And so he says that line in the movie and it made me laugh. <laughs> I'm the man of the house. So I was like, oh. that was probably one of the only things that he said that made me be like, hey, OK, okay that was a good one. Yeah, maybe, but, yeah, so, I was like, this yeah, made me think he's just not going to do anything in the whole movie. He's like, yeah, the guys don't do anything in this in this family, I guess. <laughs> right. So yeah, the, dad, too, yeah. the dad's gone. The dad, I guess, is dead. If you're wondering, what <laughs> happened, if you're wondering what happened to the dad in this movie or in the entire franchise, don't ever ask because they never talk about it in any of the movies. For some it's reason, gone. they just dad's gone. It's a typical Disney thing that they usually do with the one mom. of the parents is gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Dead dad, <laughs> out of here. So, um, so they enter Halloween Town. Aggie still doesn't realize that they are they are there, and. Marnie is just totally like this is this is it this is our lives and like like Elijah said Dylan is, is just thinks that these just whacked out hallucinations and that he fell asleep <laughs> on the bus even though on the bus people were dressed like creepy and they were and flying in the sky yep. and they were flying in the sky but who cares he was just dreaming um he was dreaming as they were flying in the sky it's it's typical um so they so you think it's just gonna be those two and then they're gonna go to grandma's house but no Sophie somehow finds her way on the bus how do you, how don't ask this questions. is all still the beginning too yeah exactly and so then they they meet up with aggie and aggie tells them more about like there's this weird mysterious fans of the opera power rangers reject villain guy that is taking over the town and we, they need to stop them the only way that they could do is the cromwell magic and you, all the cromwells basically have to get together and pick up this dude and yeah, uh, they have to use Merlin's like light thing, right? Like, yeah, yeah. They use they use some kind of magic stick, I like to call it. <laughs> <Merlin's> stick. <laughs> um yeah, that lights up. And so then Gwen finds out, of course, that that they're not there anymore and that they're in Halloween town. Gwen goes over there, she tries to take the kids back, but as she does that, they go in the movie theater. Yeah, and everyone just starts randomly showing up in Halloween town. They're like, yeah. Oh yeah, I snuck with you guys. We just didn't show it. It's like, oh, it's, okay, it, we have them now. This is a very, very random movie. If you can't tell just by the explanation, it's a very, very random film. Yeah. Last week, last week you were like, last week you were like, well, what do you think happened? Like, how do they get there? And I was like, I think she dies. I think there's a cab with a <laughs> skeleton. And you're like, no, not really. And then we're going to find out it's just a bus, which is cool. Yeah. It's like a, yeah. it's kind of like Harry Potter, which is like, is it like Harry Potter? You're like, kind of. There but was, then, there was a, a, a skeleton, skeleton taxi cab was yeah. cool though. I like yeah. that character. His name is Benny. Yeah, that's gonna be me when I whenever I die. I'm gonna become that taxi. A bony taxi driver. driver, Benny the yeah. Bone taxi. I'm driver. already I'm already just all skin and bones right here. So then at the some some things happen and the kids are left alone to get these mis, this the the weirdest ingredients to 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 try to create this potion to stop uh uh this this Power Rangers reject villain, and mm. um they have to get <laughs> uh uh. uh, uh vampire's tooth a ghost ghost sweat sweat and yeah. werewolf's hair which the werewolf is basically um uh, uh awesome powers the the vampire is just absolutely terrifying and the ghost is just kind of a who knows and so um uh <laughs> so uh yeah Someone next down. thing you know uh they uh they get all that shit together they get the the parents back and uh they save halloween town and happily ever after that's literally the movie like that's... until the sequel yeah yeah which they all learn gets... how to use their powers together and the guardians of the galaxy spoiler the guardians of the galaxy that bad guy 
mm-hmm. all hold hands and they finally do their spell and realize they're powerful together if they just stick to their family traditions. Yep. You know what? Let's, let's spoil it. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, it's revisited. We're, like people who are coming, they should know already yeah. by now. Yeah. I so watched the, it. I had to watch it. You should yeah. too. Yeah. So the villain of the movie, the, this, the entire thing of Hall- Halloween Town, the entire uh, the entire time they're there, they want you to believe that Luke, played by Philip Van Dyke, who knows if he's related to Dick Van Dyke? I still haven't. Yeah, that's what I wrote too. I said related. Question yeah. mark. Right when I saw that in the credits. Yeah, they want us to believe this is a major red herring kid right here. They want they want you to think that he is the bad guy in a kind of a way. He's like the bad guy's um, uh, uh, henchman. Yeah, yeah, he's his Igor, and uh, he uh, he's a he's a goblin. Luke is a goblin, but uh, the this this magic force uh, makes him into. They keep saying handsome, but, you know, that's teach their own. Um, so you're thinking that he's the bad guy. But right when they enter Halloween Town, they meet the mayor, who is Calabar, played by Robin Thomas, who is just absolutely awful. He's a complete dick. Uh, he, he's <laughs> he's uh, calling Sophie Sophie nonstop, even though Sophie continues I couldn't to tell. The, I couldn't tell what he was saying incorrectly. I'm like, is he not saying Sophie? No, he's saying Sophie. I couldn't Sophie. tell because they're saying so fast, but. It's yeah, it's just, just okay. it's just an odd, odd thing to 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 say. But um he's he also has like this weird obsession with the mom with with uh Gwen. And anyways, this movie has like no like build up to like to like his madness. It's literally just he just pops up, he makes fun of the kid's name, pops up again. He's the mayor the of Halloween mom. Town, right? Yeah, he's the, he's, like, yeah, he's the mayor, just, of course. He's just I don't know, like, he but, seems like a really like famous person where he's just like he kind of doesn't really care about anyone. He's like, uh uh-huh. Yeah, but the movie like that spends no time with this guy. But anyways, this the, Calabar ends up being the evil dark force, which I would not have known unless there was already a sequel out because it says Calabar's Revenge. So when I Very when true. they said the name for the first time, I'm like, did they just call him Calabar? Is that Calabar? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I didn't know that because this is my first time watching it. So I was like, I didn't know that. That was like, so that's the bad guy right from the get go. I was like, there we go. So everything I watched, I was like, okay, I see where it's going. I see where it's going. But for like people who don't know there's a sequel called that, it's just like, yeah, there's it's all kind of subtle where it's just like, okay, we're meeting these people, I guess. Yeah, it's subtle, but it's kind of, it's subtle in a very strange way where it's just, this movie is just, it's the definition of throwing things at a wall and seeing what sticks. And Calabar's is one of them. It's like, they, it's like you can tell like they like from the first draft, they're like, the mayor did it. So what, what, mm-hmm. what kind of scenes do we want to put him in? Uh, let's have him call the kid Soapy, and he wants to the mom. Boom. There we go. And that's all of his screen time right there. Now he's just going to be the villain at the end. Next, they uh, said, this next. kid this kid wants yeah. to watch nature documentaries. Yeah. This kid wants to watch nature documentaries. He just has nonstop quips, one-liners. The intern Glenn let him write the characters. <laughs> it's just like he's, uh, he seemed like he was written for it by an older man. It's just like this is – what I would want to do, and this is not what a kid would want to do. Right. So, but yeah, but there are so there, overall though. I mean, like there are really good things, but I that's that's Halloween Town right there in a nutshell. That's that's a that's a brief breakdown of <laughs> a of brief breakdown. I was like the whole yeah. What 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 I wrote for is Marnie and her siblings discover their spooky heritage on Halloween night from their grandmother, who needs help stopping an evil force from rising in her world, Halloween Town. And that's all I was expecting from you <laughs> hell no hell no you've seen us do these things but that's before. what we I, need, I break down we need people plot. to know what the whole situation is because i i didn't do that i just wrote yeah. some some side notes i mean like every decom that we do i'm assuming that people have already seen us so that's why i just want to break it break down the entire thing just so everyone could be like yeah that was weird that was, that was a weird thing that happened yeah but, yeah but now so now we get to the the important question that all the people that that listen to the podcast have been wondering since day one, which we finally got him to do. We finally got Elijah to watch it. Now we are all aching. Elijah, what did you finally think of your first viewing experience of the one and only, the fourth ever DCOM original movie, Disney Channel original movie? What did you think about Halloween Town? Halloween Town was a lot of fun. I see why it stuck around so much. Like the characters and the practical, practical effects in the background of everything that they do, I see why it stuck around for so long because it was so creative and goofy. It was very, like, uh, it made people. It made me feel nostalgic for for less CGI stuff, like, and more practical stuff. And I, I see why it stuck around in that way because they really 
handled those ways in the way of I want to say like original Star Wars era of like they just put detail in the background of the moments very well and it seemed like they had a lot of fun with making up the characters for the extras like it would have been fun to just be an extra on this movie and I, and I think that's why the world was so cool and they didn't take it se- itself too seriously with those costumes and stuff like I didn't understand the Elvis impersonator skeleton <laughs> like yeah. it, that's why it's yeah. just like those characters just made choices put their costumes together and made something happen in this world and it was really fun and i was interested to see where these like it was a good world building movie because i had never seen a world like that except for like nightmare before christmas or something but it's fun to see it on the live action screen and i like i liked it a lot i had no idea it was debbie reynolds for my whole life until like we talked about it like i realized on the podcast that it was debbie reynolds i was like wow okay but yeah, I like this movie a lot. I would give it, I want to change it out of five to out of 10 because five is very restricting. So I I, I am going to, our reviews are going to be out of 10 now. I feel like, or well, they should be. If you agree, that'd be cool. <laughs> hey, hey, you can have whatever you like. Okay, I'll go out of 10. I would give it a, for nostalgia, I would give it like a six. Mm. or seven maybe because mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like a 90s movie which was 98 but mm-hmm. it seems like a movie that's kind of like in its own bubble of time that like you can watch it whenever and feel like younger and appreciate it i feel like so that's why i gave it seven and to actually for the actual movie i would probably give it like a mm, probably around there too like a six and a half or seven probably it's really good like it's a movie that i would want to show like a younger generation for the first time and watch it with them and see what they think and then see if they enjoy it. That's my yeah. opinion of it. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's what I think the people wanted to hear you say. I, 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 I hit uh, the spot for the season. Yes. No, that's, Pop, that's popcorn. what it is. Yeah. It's, it's yes. a good, it's a good um, family Halloween movie. If you want to watch yes. something and you don't want to get like, like stay up all night, get too freaked out, but you want to still be in the Halloween spirit, like, this is this is a pretty solid one. It's and it's it's super cheesy. I don't expect it to be anything else, but but it's still yeah. a lot of fun. And for the people that you know that that grew up with it, now that we have Disney Plus and stuff, like to have access to something like this is actually pretty pretty awesome. And this is why you know I like I wanted to do these decom reviews is because of movies like this and like Pixel Perfect and Brink, movies mm-hmm. that. I would I never thought that I would I would ever see ever again. I never thought yeah. that I would have an opportunity to to see these movies ever again. Yeah. And Halloween Town's definitely one of them. And to have access to not just the first one, but the second one, the third one, and the fourth one is just like, oh a kind of overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. One of the but, first um, things I wrote after a while I was like, does this movie have a prequel? Because I feel like they have a lot of stuff that they mentioned that already happened. I feel like they could make something happen like a new version of Halloween town. Like I, I know we talked about like a sequel series of Xenon, which would be interesting and a sequel. Mm-hmm. I feel like a sequel series for this one would work too for nowadays, but I think there might've been rumors about it, but which one between Halloween town and Xenon, would you rather have a sequel series to? If um, you had to choose one. Probably Halloween town, because there's a lot more interesting things going on. Like with Gwen and Gwen and Aggie, why they are like, so, like and also like Gwen with like the 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 father, like mm-hmm. she doesn't want to talk about like she doesn't want to go like I had such a warp <laughs> yeah you're like there's so head. many things <laughs> no I had such a warp theory in my head when uh and it's that the reason why Gwen doesn't want to go back to Halloween Town is because uh, uh the father of their children died in some in some way. And it was like kind of her fault. And so that's why she was like, you know what? Never touch magic again. Don't want my kids anywhere near that place. And if it's not her fault, then maybe it was Aggie's fault. Maybe Aggie being accidentally killed the father of, <laughs> of her children. So, you know, there, but regardless of that, I know Disney won't go that dark. But- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Justin. I don't know if we can do that, Disney said. <laughs> okay. Because they're, they're. Anyways. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, uh, uh, but I could see that, like, and see some interesting things. Like you said, like a prequel series or like something yeah. for a newer generation, like having, uh, bringing back Kimberly And they J. could just Brown. have like a new season or like mini se- like a season every Halloween season instead of it being mm-hmm. like, like they just plan for that every year. So they keep the theme of Halloween. 
Yeah, even if it's a TV show, like if it's just like a movie, like another series of movies where like Kimberly J. Brown is taking the Debbie Reynolds role. I could see that happening. I could see it kind of, I could see and it working. Break open the multiverse and they bring in Sarah Paxton as another Marnie. Oh, dude. I'm just kidding. So Dang, it's all, man. it's all Marvel stuff. Anyway. Yeah. That's a uh, uh, goodness. Um, what would, would you rate that then out of, so I would give it for nostalgia and real reading out of 10. N- nostalgia. I would give it definitely a 10 out of 10. Every, this movie, like every single time I watch it brings me right back to it's got this glow. There's something about nineties yeah. movies that just have this mm-hmm. beautiful glow, especially for dark scenes that are all like candlelit and stuff. Mm-hmm. And the importance of the music in this movie. Yeah. It's just, yes. The music. There's I this, do like there's this home, home feeling that I always have around nineties film and the way they look and stuff like and this one really strongly. I said, it doesn't feel yeah. like the nineties because the movie itself doesn't say it's the nineties, but just for the technology sake 90s for sure Mm -hmm. it's prevalent and that's why i like definitely uh as the series goes along especially the second movie definitely Mm -hmm. stays with the it it definitely goes with the times (laughs) oh really it goes more digital yes it gets a little more but um makes that makes sense anyway yeah i would give it a 10 out of for nostalgia for nostalgia i would give it a 10 but for an actual movie i'm even though you gave it a six and a half i'm like we're kind of praising a little bit I'm going to give this movie a five only mm-hmm. because it is, it does drag a bit. And like I said, the, the plot is just, it's one of the most like, it, it's a messy, messy plot. Yeah. And Cause they have, they're like, foresh- they have like foreshadowing for the sister, the mm-hmm. younger sister they're foreshadowing with. And it's very obvious. They should have addressed it like way earlier on. Mm-hmm. Just be like, Oh, she's the one who's, she's more powerful than Marnie is. But yeah, yeah, and I wish there's that, a lot of things like that where it's like just I should address that. Yeah, just just yeah, you know, and and just the the reveal of the villain too. Because I remember even when I was a kid, when they revealed it to be Caliber, I was like, wait, who is this guy? Because I just yeah. it, it's so unmemorable of who he was before. Because he's not he doesn't have a prominent role. I feel like if he had like a more like he he showed up like every other scene, not not just like. Yeah, and they're trying One to be scene. like, oh, who's who, who's then, this guy thing? And that, that should have been more yeah. of a mystery of who he is, and a more mystery, exactly. Him. More of a more it makes you <clears throat> makes you question like everybody that's that that uh, Aggie hangs out with instead of it just being like, here's the mayor, here's this douchebag kid that got a new face. He's a goblin, but he has a new face. <laughs> yeah, here's this yeah, here's this exactly. girl that Aggie hangs out with, and now she has a dub face too. That's about it. Everybody else just that, yeah. So that's so that's five. the. I would give that's it not five, bad though. Five out of that's, 10. That, that's, no, the average. that's an average. That's an average. Yeah, no. It's, I feel it's like it's still... way easier to differentiate our rating now that it's out of ten. It's like, oh, that's right in the middle. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Instead of saying, what do we say? Two point five for average. Mm-hmm. I don't like that anymore. It just sounds <laughs> better saying five out of ten. Yeah, no. I I, I, still, I think I think yeah, five out of ten popcorns. I think that it's still a solid film. I would still watch watch this every year, especially since we have access to it with Disney yeah, Plus. Yeah, it definitely would be on my list of movies to watch now. Mm-hmm. Traditionally, it, just, it seems like a traditional Halloween movie. Yeah, I love but, it. Um, yeah, let us know what you guys are watching. Uh, you know, I got anything to say to the people, Justin? Um, don't do drugs. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Thanks for watching. Join us again when you you want to. Subscribe and stuff. Bye, guys.